In certain cases, albums have such a special aura that it becomes part of the project's legacy. Whether it's a monumental debut like Illmatic or Enter the Wu-Tang 36 Chambers through the game-changing albums such as My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy or Get Rich or Die Trying, the inspirations, intentions, and recording process behind some records never cease to amaze me. Welcome back to Hip Hop Madness. I'm your host, Pro The Goat. Today, we're going to be taking a look at why Dr. Dre gave up on Detox. Let's get into it. So when it comes to hip hop albums that have obtained mythical status, the project that harbors the most intrigue of all is one that actually has never seen the light of day. First alluded to 18 years ago, Dr. Dre's Detox was slated to be his final album in which Just Blaze estimates was the result of one comment snowballing into a cultural phenomenon. When he talked about it, people took it as an announcement just told MTV Rap Fix, it was more so, this is something that I'm thinking about doing. So from there, the word kept spreading and he started working on it. Not necessarily because he wanted to, but because he felt like he had to. Known as an eternal workaholic, we've allegedly heard traces of Detox's DNA of classic tracks, including much of 50 Cent and the game's debut, all the way through to Good Kid Mad City's bonus track, The Recipe. While its skeleton has been a springboard for other careers, Detox remains a glaring absence from not only Dre's catalog, but hip hop as we know it. As Snoop famously summarized it in The Defiant Ones, I dropped five albums since the day Detox was supposed to come out to the day it didn't come out. Officially declared dead in 2015, after Dre unveiled the star-studded Compton, the record is now referred to as one of hip-hop's biggest what-ifs. But while TDE didn't help to fan the flames between Kendrick's legendary Look Out For Detox freestyle through the schoolboy Q claiming that Detox is like a mix away on There He Go, more energy has been spent on mourning the record's loss to exploring why it was aborted. To do so, establishing the key turning points in the timeline of the project is crucially important. Starting way back at the turn of the millennium, Dr. Dre was at the pinnacle of the game once again after his second solo project 2001 proved that he was as essential as ever. Harboring a cultural prominence that arguably surpasses the NWA days and rivaling the impact of the chronic, Dre's intention to make another was likely sparked by not just the rampant success of the album, but the iconic Up and Smoke tour that followed alongside Snoop, Eminem, and Ice Cube. Energized by all that happened, but disillusioned with the rinse and repeat formula that West Coast hip hop had fallen into, a 2002 report from MTV revealed that Dre initially had grand plans that would have left Lin Manuel Miranda following in his footsteps. I'm not talking about lowriders and blunts and all that anymore. I mean, that's played. I had to come up with something different, but still keep it hardcore. So I've decided to make my album one story about one person and just do the record through a character's eyes. And everybody that appears on my album is gonna be a character. So it's basically going to be like a hip hop musical. After speculating that it would take a year to pull it together, fans got understandably excited. But as we edged towards the conclusion of 2002, delays on Detox were already being implemented and alongside the news that he was working on an Ice Cube album that actually never even saw the light of day, initiated a theme that become painfully familiar. Speaking about his creative process, Dr. Dre remarked, we are definitely gonna put our all in everything that we work on because we are our worst critics and we have to feel like we made a record that we have to buy, you know what I'm saying? And I don't buy a lot of records. At this stage, it's important to note that Dr. Dre still controlled the dialogue around Detox, providing updates on his terms. But as he retreated inward once more and dedicated himself to the business of the boards, others would come in to fill the void and drip feed information. I describe it as the most advanced rap album musically and lyrically will probably ever have a chance to listen to. Dr. Dre always tries to top his last one. Scott Storch informed MTV in January of 2004. That's why they don't come out every five minutes. He puts a lot of time, energy, and genius. Whether or not Scott's comments had any bearing on his decision, 
the midpoint of the year saw Dre contradict everything that the Floridian producer has suggested as he told Double XL that I've decided within the last two weeks or so that I wasn't going to do another album. I want to work on these artists. And with that, the Compton icon entered a boom period of productivity that spawned the game's debut, 50's The Massacre, Busta Rhymes career rejuvenating The Big Bang, and M's last album before his initial hiatus with Encore. Essentially, anything but Detox. Although there was substantial amount of fanfare around Aftermath's prolific run, the allure of Detox continued to simmer on, and as such, ensured that it was never displaced in the playbook of journalists when talking to Dre's artists. Speaking in 2008, Dre's former protege Snoop Dogg reignited the flames when he told Rolling Stone, that record is real. I was starting to doubt it myself and then I went up in there and he played so much music for me and knocked my head off. Laced with the same expectation heightening quality of Storch's comments from four years prior, the difference is that this time, Snoop's remarks coincided with Dre making a bold announcement of his own. In a perfect world, I'm shooting for a November or December release, he told USA Today, adding that it would feature Nas, Jay-Z, and Lil Wayne. Revived from a pipe dream and brought into the release slate, fans all over the world braced themselves for the return of the doctor, again. But as 2008 transitioned into 2009, Detox dealt its most damaging blow, which, in retrospect, might have altered the course of the project once and for all. Although he's a trailblazer in countless other ways, Dre and Detox also weathered the emotional firestorm of leaks way before Cardi and Uzi were approaching those responsible for accessing their own vaults. Amid the Nas and TI assisted topless surfacing, 2010 saw Under Pressure, which was slated to be the record's lead single, leak online, prompting it to be scrapped from the project altogether. <laughs> off to say the least, Dre released a statement on his official website, but that didn't begin to scratch the surface of the impact that any incomplete song hitting eardrums would have had on the Aftermath mastermind. As for a perfectionist such as Dre, the idea that something unfinished could emerge into the public domain is pretty much the worst thing that could have happened. During a conversation with Vibe that followed the leak, Dre conceded that he was taken aback by the long road to detox and mentioned an instrumental album known as The Planets that would also hit the cutting room floor. I thought it would take, at worst case, a couple years. For example, actual work time on The Chronic was nine months and actual work time on my last album, 2001, was about 10 months. The actual work time on this album is about half of that, where I'm seriously focusing on it. There's always something coming up, like signing talent, old and new. Caught up in the tangled web of life as a music exec and the mentorship that comes with it, Dre was once again struggling to shoulder the heavy load, the detox, and his own exceedingly high standards. In this instance, Eminem's thought process for his verse on 2011's Skylar Grey aided I Need a Doctor were transparent and were built to renew his confidence. The reaction I wanted was to spark him even more than he's been sparked lately. You know what I'm saying? Kind of even push it further and just get him to finish the album. Metaphorically speaking, like, you know, feels like Dre's been in a coma. Like, me and hip hop are trying to wake him up. Although I Need a Doctor performed well, and the Snoop and Akon flank Kush felt like a spiritual successor to the next episode, these attempts to creatively boost Dre didn't work out as planned. If anything, he receded. In a conversation with Fader TV that was intended to advertise his Beats headphones, Dre suggested that he'd reach a point of artistic fatigue. Shortly after he told the interviewer that he was always aiming for greatness in whatever he pursued, Dre had decided to pry himself out of the lab for the sake of his own sanity. Because I've been working on music for 27 years now, and the longest I've ever been out of the studio in 27 years has been two weeks. Really? So yeah, I feel like I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. I'm never gonna stop music, it's like air to me. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a break, enjoy some time with the family, and it's like, until I get that itch to get back in. Taken into context, alongside 50 Cent's assessment, that I'm not sure if he's gonna actually release a full CD or if he wants to just release the music that he's comfortable with, all signs suggested that Dr. Dre's passion had faltered. 
or more dishearteningly, the idea that he'd release what he was comfortable with meant that the pioneering artist was having a crisis of confidence at play. Five years on, these fears would all be but confirmed during an episode of his The Pharmacy radio show on Beats One. This is something you're not gonna hear many artists say. The reason that Detox didn't come out was because I didn't like it. It wasn't good. The record, it just wasn't good. I mean, seriously, I worked my ass off on it, but I didn't think I did a good enough job. I couldn't do that to my fans. I couldn't do that to myself, to be honest. In this one announcement from Dre, we have the key to why Detox never emerged. Whether or not his assessment of his work was accurate or skewed by the pressure of delivering the masterpiece that audiences and the industry expected, Dre reached the point where he was second guessing himself and when you break it down, this should come as no surprise. As when your peers are constantly pushing the narrative that the record is gonna be revolutionizing music as we know it, how could Detox ever be deemed good enough? Far be it from an idea that Dre alone has voiced, iconic Cali producer and rapper DJ Quick, who was rebuffing the idea of Detox ever being released since 2012, believes that Dre overanalyzing things and feeling the need to make something era-defining made Detox into an impossible mountain to scale. Because I worked on Detox, like there was times where, you know, me and Dre had what we call thinking, just a thinking session, you know, a hypothesis only not program it. And just in theory, Detox is, it's a super smart ass piece of music, but it's all music, you know what I mean? And I think that that's what could be the stumbling block for that record is because it's all music. You got so many people to please. If you're off with one, then it'll, it won't be a classic record. So I understand Dre's concerns about putting it out. Considering his unparalleled career, a net worth that nears a billion, and the praise that everyone had for the demos he produced, it's hard to imagine that Dre would be worried about falling short. But just as the people that had claimed he turned pop or the firm flopped were the cause of his sleepless nights on Forgot About Dre, the concept of dropping Detox to a middling reaction will provide that same sort of mental anguish, but magnified to an extreme degree. And while Scott Storch is still banging the drum for its release, a further five years of hype since its initial cancellation wouldn't make it any easier for Dre to pull the trigger. So between the impossible expectations that surrounded the record and the particular strain of madness that comes with Dre's genius, everyone that pined for detox or discussed its recording process created a monster that escaped its creator's grasp. Now, we can only hope that some of the fruits of those 18 years worth of sessions will live on in some form. This has been a Hip Hop Madness original. Make sure to stay tuned and stay up to date on everything we got going on. Once again, I'm your host, Pro to Go. Hit me up, let me know what type of videos you want me to do, what type of artists you want me to discuss, and what kind of content you want to see. Hit that subscribe button, notification bell to stay up to date on all of our new videos. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Hip Hop Madness. Join the movement.